All right, guys, here we have a new simulation with the Factor.io program coupled with the Siemens TIA Portal version 14. Uh, this simulation, we're going to make use of the move function right here. So in a previous video, I've gone through the, the move function in detail, showing you how to create this guy. But now we're going to see it in play. So what you're going to do is you'll, I'll have another video that walks you through how to create this simulation here. But I've simply just dropped in the tank here the tank and electrical box with the number of push buttons and switches here. Uh, what you need to know for this guy is that these two valves, the fill valve and the discharge valve, if I go to view and dock all my tags, uh, these guys are proportional valves and that if I put, put a zero to 10 volt signal to my fill valve, it's obviously gonna turn it on. If I put a zero to 10 volt signal to my discharge valve, this guy right here, so say I put five volts there, then I've got it halfway open and it's a proportional valve. So at 10 volts, I'm fully open now. Okay, so we'll drain out the tank. Okay, let's drop this guy down. Let's uh, get rid of our forces. Sometimes people have uh, emailed me saying that uh, certain inputs and outputs aren't working. It's possible that in creating your um, docking all your tags, you may have by mistake forced some of your bits. So just release those guys. We'll go to view and we'll clear our dock tags. Okay, I'm gonna reset my animation now to bring all the water out. And I'll show you this electrical box that is mounted on the side here. So all I've done is just dropped in a box and put a number of switches here. So I have an e-stop here. I have a digital display, so in the next few videos you'll see how to take the level in the tank and have that displayed here. I have an auto manual switch, so in this position here I'm in auto mode, in this position here I'm in manual mode. I have a stop push button that seems to have a flashing bit that's attached to it. A start push button, this is a normally closed push button, this is a normally open push button, and all my other push buttons are going to be normally open. So I have a reset push button. Then I have a fill and a drain push button. And these guys down here are indicator lights for 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100% full. But they're also push buttons. So if I press these, I should be able to go to these exact levels when I'm in the automatic mode. Okay, my program is set up so that uh, each time that I reset the animation, I have a flashing bit here on my stop push button. I need to reset my program. So I have a portion of my program that does a reset bit. That gives me a solid stop button now. And now I'm ready to put it into ready to run or system run. So I'm going to hit the start push button. And in doing so, it allows me to use every one of these push buttons here now. Okay, I'm in manual mode right now. Um, let's just go and scroll out here. So in manual mode, I should be able to hit my fill push button and manually fill the tank. And you'll see that now that I'm above my 0%, my first indicator light is turned off. Once I get to 25%, my first light should turn on. 25% is at 75. Okay, now you'll see that um, I'm just shy of 75, so my uh, indicator light is not turning on yet. I can fill it just a touch more. Now you'll see that I'm above 75. So this one's hard to get the lights to come in because it's at a specific level, right? So you have to get the level of the tank exactly at that level. And again, this is a great animation is in that um, when you stop the pump, the top of the tank kind of ripples there and you can see that output flashing there for a little bit. But I'm now at 25% and my indicator light for 25% is on. If I now keep going and fill the tank and I get to 50%, and my next light should turn on. So 50% is 300 uh, to the top there. So 150 will be 50%. And you can see that uh, it's a little bit, uh, I may have to work a little bit on those values there because it came in a little bit too early there. Okay, so I got 150 for uh, my 50% range there. And again, once that water settles down, hopefully this light will turn on. Beautiful. So I'm able to manually fill and drain the tank. If I drain this now, I can drain it all the way to the bottom there. And once I get to the bottom, then uh, the 0% will 
indicator light will turn on and in going there we'll see the 25 percent indicator light flash when we get to 75 which is coming up right about there there we go so i have my fill uh when i'm filling the tank i have a five volt signal going to my fill valve so i'm just slowly filling the tank here i have 10 volts going to my drain valve or my discharge valve I want it to drain as fast as possible. But the animation here is amazing in that once the, the physical level of the tank gets lower, it actually slowly, slowly drains out because obviously there's less head pressure from the water in the tank here. So we're just dropping her down here until we get to zero. And once we get to zero, then that final indicator light should turn on here. There we go. Nice. Okay. Uh, the other thing that I have in my program is that uh, say there was uh, an emergency and we need to stop everything, then we can hit the, the E stop here. When I hit the E stop, I have a flashing bit here now on my stop push button to tell me that not only have I stopped, but I've, I'm in the E stop situation now. So I need to check on what's just happened. Then I need to revert the E stop back to its rest state. I need to reset my push buttons here. So I have a reset program that runs for about four seconds. And once that finishes, I have a, a nice solid light here on my stop. So I know that I'm ready to go and then I can hit my start push button and start everything up again. When I'm in the E stop mode, then nothing works. Start push button doesn't work. Uh, this one will be able to change between auto and manual, but none of these other push buttons will work and nothing fills or drains when we're in an e-stop mode. If I revert the e-stop back to its same spot, hit the reset, then I'm able to make use of each of these push buttons now. So we've seen it in the manual mode. Uh, let's go to the auto mode now. And I have two push buttons now. Uh, because of the nature of the animation, this guy fills and drains at different, uh, like different rates. When you're filling it, um, then obviously you're increasing the head pressure, right? When you're draining it, then you'll have maximum head pressure, so it will drain faster than it will fill. Um, and it will fill faster until it gets to about this point, and then that head pressure from the water will start pushing back on the pump there. So um, so let's hit the, the fill here. Once I hit the fill, then I can now select any of these uh, indicator push buttons, and I'll go to each of my different levels here. So we'll go into automat mode, we'll hit the fill, Oh, got to put it into run mode. Okay, so in run mode, hit the fill, and I want to go to uh, 25%. I'll show you the, the, the program in depth in uh, in the next few videos, guys. We'll slowly walk through how I've created this one. Okay, so we're at zero. We want to go to 25%, so we'll click this guy. And this guy will increase the level in the tank. And again, at 25%, that should be 75 in our tank. And it stops basically dead on at 75. You may be able to hear the PLC clicking behind me. Uh, that is because as this settles out, um, I have a small range that I've created to look at the level in the tank. And within that range, I want this indicator light on. So as it ripples, it kind of turns the light on and off there. Once the, the level of the tank settles out, then my indicator light settles as well. Beautiful. I want to go to 50% now. Again, I'm in the, the fill mode here, so I'm filling up to 50%. We should get to 150 here and then stop. As that water level settles out, then the indicator light. So there, it worked. Interesting, it worked just before I went to go to make this video. Now that indicator light is not turning on. Well, that's a pain. Okay, so I'll have to work on the... I. Let's see, are we actually at 150? A little bit of parallax there, but we're pretty good there, eh? So it may be just that I need to increase the range there. Um, it's very hard to get it exactly at that level. We're not using any proportional integral or derivative, so I need to increase the range there that actually turns on that indicator light. Okay, let's go to uh, 75. Sometimes things do not work out, even though you've tried very hard for them to work out. So let's go to 75 now. Uh, 75 is... Uh, 220, 225. So at 225, we should stop right about here. 
Beautiful. And hopefully the, this indicator light turns on. Yeah, so obviously I need to work on the range in which those indicator lights are turning on because we are basically dead on, or maybe I'm just a little bit shy of that 225. Uh, that's pretty good. So I'll have to work on those indicator lights. Okay, we're going to 100%. That goes to 300 and should stop. Nice. And that indicator light for 100% kicks in there. So it looks like I need to work on uh, my 50 and my 75% there. Let's see if these indicator lights come in when I drain it now. So we're still in the auto mode here. And I'm going to go to automatic now. And I'm now going to go to my drain. So I can switch back and forth between uh, my fill and my drain. Okay, so you can see here that uh, once I go to the filling, then this bit right here, this memory bit kicks in. Once I go to drain, then I can no longer fill the tank anymore. I'm now uh, draining the tank to either 75, 50, 25% or zero. So let's do that. So let's drop her down to 75 now. So we'll see, let's just drop this program down just a touch here. You'll see uh, the drain here. We're now at 75%. There we go. Okay, so at 75%, we should be at uh, 225. And again, man, those lights are not working for me. That's funny because um, I wonder it's just the fact that I have too many things open. I have the, the, the Siemens, I have the factory IO now, and I have my, um, my screen recorder. Everything was working like mint just uh, 30 seconds ago. So I may have to work on that. Um, I had it just shy of 225. So let's see for 50% whether it works. Fifty percent is one fifty. There we go. Saying we're at one fifty, and let's see exactly where we are. That's pretty good, right? Again, we have a little bit of parallax, and that it's hard to see exactly the level of the tank, but that seems pretty mint. Nice. Okay, let's see how uh, twenty-five percent comes in. Twenty-five percent should stop it here at seventy-five. Beauty. And let's go to zero and we'll drain the whole tank out. And right now you can, if I look at my tags here, you can see that my discharge valve is getting 10 volts. So it's open, wide open and draining out everything that's in my tank there. Sweet. Okay, so the next few videos are going to show you or walk you through how I've created this program. Um, and then you guys can watch how I've created it. Uh, then you can work on it at home or in class. Uh, and then you can see if you can develop a better program than what I have. Is this the best way to control the level in the tank? No, it's but it's a cool way of using the move function. We've got a number of different things in the background. Just getting the um, the auto manual switch to work, getting the e-stop to flash that stop uh, push button, getting our start bu button to give us a system run, giving the reset to reset everything for about four seconds, flipping back and forth between the fill and the drain here, and then making use of the move functions for both the fill and the drain, and getting these darn indicator lights to turn on at our exact levels in the tank there. And in, and in doing so, and all, throughout each of those things, we're controlling uh, the voltage to either the fill valve or to the discharge valve um, by using a zero to 10 volt signal. And we're making use of uh, the level sensor here, um, 
which they don't tell us which one it is. I haven't looked up what it is, but it looks like a capacitive sensor here. And this level sensor gives us a zero to 10 volt signal so that we can tell exactly what level that uh, we are in the tank there. So we can use some comparative functions. We can use the move function. We'll use some, um, some timers. We'll use the clock as well, possibly for that flashing bit. So there's a lot of cool things that we can look at and we'll look at in subsequent videos. All right, guys, so hopefully you've liked this video. Uh, if you have, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, and you'll see those subsequent videos coming through. Uh, and if you have better ways to program than I have, or if you have a different way to program what, I've, what I'm going to be describing in the next videos, then please make comments below. Send emails to show your a PDF of your program as well, uh, and then we can learn from each other. So I do this these videos to to learn as much as I can, to share what I've learned, uh, but then open it up to everybody to say, I, that's not really the best way to do it. Maybe you want to look at uh, at this instruction, and that's a much better way of, uh, of programming. So uh, I'll leave it up to you guys to open up the discussions below in the comment section, and I'll see you guys in the next videos. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon.